بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اما بعد لاس ٹائم وی لکڈ ایٹ فور کمپوننٹس آف جملہ فیریہ وی لکڈ ایٹ دیٹ اگزامپل بٹ ڈیڈ ناٹ انالائز دیٹ اون دا بورڈ سو لیٹس ہیو اے لک ایٹ دیٹ سینٹینس اگین ناصر حامد زید فسوکی Hamid helped Zaid in the market, in the mall, in the shopping center. It could be translated depending on the context. So, Fissuki here is Fi is our harfi jar and Suk is our ism majroor. So, this jar and majroor combine to make marakkab jari preposition phrase and looking at these four components then we have nasara which is our fail hamid is our file zaid is our mafaul and this murakkab jari is our mutallik fail so fail file mafaul and mutallik fail combine to make jumla failia and it's called jumla failia khabaria because we are giving khabar here we are giving information here For example, we are not asking question. When question is asked, there is a different name. We will go into that later, inshallah. So, analyzing a sentence like this, uh, it is called Tarkib. Tarkib basically is an Indian subcontinent concept and it is taught in madrasas this way. Um, if we look at uh, Arabic books of Arabic grammar, they do not talk about Tarkib at all. The reason for that is that um, Tarkib is, the main purpose of Tarkib is to find out the meaning and do the correct translation. And in Arabic books, uh, which are written for Arabic students whose first language is Arabic, translating is not their problem. They know the language anyway. So, Tarkib is focused on meaning and translation and what Arab does then? Arab is focused on grammar. There are similarities but these are two different concepts. Let's look at this sentence again. Hazal waladul hasanu mujtahidun. So, let's analyze this from the Turkey point of view Haza is our Isme Ishara and Al Waladu is our Musharan Ilah then Al Hasanu is Sifa of this Mosuf and this Mosuf and Sifa combine to make Murakkab Tawsifi and whole of that Murakkab Tawsifi then becomes Musharan Ilah for this Ism Ishara and all of that then becomes our mutada and mujtahidun is our khabar so this clever boy is hard working so that's where is come mutada is khabar so the focus here is to do correct translation when we go from definite to indefinite that's where we put is mr so before this it's our mutada after this it's our khabar so that is all tarkeeb clearly what is arab as we said the focus of arab is on grammar so to describe the arab of a noun of an ism we will have to answer three questions what is the grammatical function of that ism of that word what state is that word in and how is that state expressed so to find out then what's the difference between tarkeeb and arab let us look at this small sentence this is part of the first ayah of surah ikhlas we all know the meanings anyway so kul ho wallahu ahad allahu ahadun allah is one and only so if we do its tarkeeb 
Allah lafz jalala is our muqtada and ahadun is our khabar. So muqtada and khabar combine to make jumla ismiya khabariya and this is our tarkeeb. So how we do or describe the Arab of that small sentence? We'll have to answer those three questions. So let's take the first noun, Allah. Allah will say Allah lafaz jalala. It is important to say when we when we talk about Allah to say lafaz jalala because saying Allah is marfu, mansub and majroor. Majroor means down and stressed, so uh, it's not nice. So out of respect, when we describe, we say Allah lafaz jalala. What's the grammatical function? It is muqtada. Okay, so. What state that noun is in? It is marfu. And how is that state expressed? Alamatu rafahi adamma. So marker of this being in rafa is damma here. So the next noun ahadun we say its grammatical function is that it is khabar. How, uh, what state that is in? It is marfu again. And how is that state expressed? Again, similarly, alamatu rafahi adamma. So, three questions we have answered here. So, what is the grammatical function of the noun? Whether it's muqtada, khabar, file, or maf'ul. And then, what state that uh, noun is in? Is it um, marfu, mansub, or majroor? And how is that state expressed? So that was easy to singular nouns. Um, let's look at this example. Arrijalu kaimuna. The men are standing. So Rajunun is one man and Rijalun is many men, so that's plural, and that is Jama Mukatsa. So Rijalun, when we make it definite, it becomes Arrijalu, we lose the mean. So Arrijalu and Kaimun is singular, and Kaimuna is plural of that singular. So this is called Jama Muzakkar Salum, we know that. So how do we describe the Arab of these two nouns? Arrijalu. Similarly, here and in this example, we'll say um, grammatical function of this noun is that this is muqtada and how is that state um, um, what state that is in it is marfu again and how is that state expressed alamatu rafahi adamma clearly we have got dhamma here so that's easy what about ka imuna how we describe the arab of this we'll say um, its grammatical function is that it's khabar it's uh, the state which is which it is in is marfu and how is that state expressed we'll say alamatu rafahi al waw so the marker of rafa here is waw okay so it's not none of those um harakas fatha damma or kasra the marker of Rafa here is wow, and then we can explain it further why wow is um, marker of Arab here. Li annahu jama muzakkar salam because this is jama muzakkar salam. Okay, so now you will be thinking that in jama muzakkar salam, where does this noon goes? Why noon is not marker of Arab here? Uh, if you remember, in certain circumstances, situations. Noon drops. For example, if we look at the example of uh, Mudafil Mudafil, I will say door of the mosque. So we will say Babul Masjidi. Babu was actually Babun, and when Babun becomes Mudaf, it loses its Tanveen. So another way of saying that is that uh, Mudaf is delicate and it cannot carry heavy stuff. So it needs light Arab. So making the Arab light of Babun with the mean is to 
reduce it to just one dhamma. So we, we take that to mean away and we just give it just one dhamma. So it becomes Babul Masjidi. And in this case, uh, Babul, um, the, the, how the, what is the marker of Arab over there? Uh, marker of Arab uh, because uh, in Madakkab Idafi, the Arab is shown on Mudaf, so Dhamma will be the marker of Arab in that case. If we say two doors of the mosque, so two doors from Babun, it will become Babani, dual, Babani. So if we say two doors of the mosque, we, we don't say Baba Nil Masjidi because we know that we will have to make the Arab of um, Mudaf light and only way we can make the Arab light here is we drop the noon. So it becomes Babal Masjidi. So Ba Ba. So on the second, after second Ba is we also have Aleph. So Ba Ba it's because it ends in Aleph and Aleph is the marker of Arab here. So in dual the marker of Arab is Aleph in Rafa. And if it is uh, by some who becomes the Babaini in Nasavanjar, Babaini, so we will drop the noon and Ya will be the uh, marker of Arab in that particular example. For example, we, we say, um, if I say Ra'aytu, Babel Masjidi, Babel Masjidi. So I saw two doors of the mosque, and in that case, because um, the door becomes uh, um, something which we have looked at, it becomes an object. So object we know is in Rafa. So from Babani, it becomes Ba Baini. So um, and in the case of plural. Uh, it is um, from Kai Muna, Kai Muna, and when it becomes Kai Mina in Nasab and Jar, so again, noon will not count because it tends to drop anyway. So our Arab will be Ya in that case. Marker of Arab will be Ya in that case. You may also say, why this uh, this sil uh, uh, this Skoon here, the sign of silence, Skoon here? Why does that not contribute to Arab? The reason for that is that in um, uh, scripts of Quran, which are in um, India and Pakistan mainly, they tend to write this skoon. Uh, in scripts of Quran, which are in Arab countries and in Africa, they do not tend to write this skoon here. So whether the skoon is there or it isn't there, it is still ka emuna. So in this example, clearly we can see Wo is the marker of Arab here in this known which is our Jama Muzakkar Salim. I hope that has helped to consolidate our concept of uh, Arab. I have spent some time on it. Actually, we were, we were working on Nublaferia, but I thought it was important to bring the subject of Arab back in here. If you remember early on, I said our concept of Arab is going to evolve with time. To start with, we perhaps thought Fatha Dhamma and Kasra were Arab. Then we came to know, know th th those are not necessarily markers of Arab in all the nouns. And then we use sounds like Ani and Aini, Una and Ina as markers of Arab. That's okay, that was easy for us to do that and, and to develop our understanding of the Arab. But actually, when you describe the Arab, that's how you describe it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika.